we're back again with another engaging edition of sports tonight reaching you live from channels tv sports center in lagos nigeria it's good to have you join us to talk sports i'm austin okonakman on the show tonight i will tell you what to expect tomorrow when the fifth edition of the badminton classic says of in lagos that's where we'll get top badminton players from different parts of the world come to lagos to compete for pride and glory there's also some good prize money at stake to win but for nigeria it's all about consistency let's see if those top players are new uh dockers can actually show that, yes, they want to rule Africa. We'll get to see when the badminton classic sells us tomorrow in Lagos. We're also counting down to the Nigeria Open. That one is for table tennis. Yes, August the 8th, it will serve off in Lagos. Uh, look, we just finished the National Junior Table Tennis League. Loads of talent we discovered in that one. Um, the vice president of ITTF Africa, Wai, then it's all showed. He says, look, we've done this. We love what we saw. We need to keep it going. And I agree with him. I don't know. Quadri says, look, I've, I've seen my replacement. Olufunke or Shonaike says, the future looks good, particularly for female table tennis players. But do you know we have para table tennis players also? For instance, Ahmed Koleosho is Africa's number one in the class three events. Five para table tennis players have qualified for the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics. I love that story. We'll talk about special sports tonight on this show. And I'll show so much love to Nigeria's victorious para power lifters. We are back to the country after showing the world that impossible is nothing. Finishing second on the medals table with three gold medals. Nigeria also dominated the women's category. One of those champions those lovely ladies that won gold will be with us tonight on the show i'm not going to tell you who she is yet but just walk with us tonight we're going to show some love again to special sports you'll feel the power of sports when we get to that segment so walk with us on this journey i'll also let you know once again the teams that have been promoted to the nigeria professional football league after winning their matches at the nnl super six we're waiting for the Super 4, uh, that we give us the winner, but wow, fans of shooting stars. I thought it was just Toby that wasn't happy yesterday. I got on social media, and all of them, they were expecting their darling shooting stars to beat Aqua Stalets to get into uh, top flight football, but that didn't happen. That's football for you. In our world of sports, impossible is nothing. Anything can happen. So uh, shooting stars, we need to wait one more year to see if they can come back to the MPFL. We'll also play some basketball, let you know what's going on at the African Nigerian team. They're struggling. Uh, not good news coming from that match against Algeria. But hey, I reminded you guys yesterday that that one is not, it's not about the players going out there to play basketball and win. It is to open our eyes to the things we need to do to develop league basketball in Nigeria. I'll talk about it on the show tonight. I'll also let you know that tomorrow, uh, the Women's Football League in Nigeria will kick off. We'll give you the fixtures and some of the matches that you can follow from the different centers where you'll be sports tonight on your award-winning sports loving channels, television. Welcome on board. This is the fun factory. What are you talking about? Uh, look, in, in um, Algeria, they are still celebrating the desert foxes. Uh, look, fans came out. They said, we are proud of you. In Nigeria, we're still trying to say how we're just going to get into it. Uh, the federal government said, oh, awesome job you guys did representing the country. You won bronze. Uh, but for football administration, we're just watching what's going on. But we just hope that the momentum will be sustained and then football Football development will continue in the country, particularly with league football. We've seen that we're struggling with infrastructure, we're struggling with developing the women's game. There's still so much to be done at the grassroots. So let's see how we can get into that now that the Africa Cup of Nations is over. It's football development in Nigeria. Let me bring you into the conversation. Sports tonight. You can talk to us on Twitter, channels underscore sports, Facebook, channels I think sports. You can send us an email, it's sports tonight at channels tv.com. All our top stories can be viewed on our, on our website, channelstv.com, and on YouTube, forward slash channels web. Log on to m.channelstv.com, download the Channels TV app for any of those devices, and you'll be part of the show tonight. So much 
is going down in our world of sports. What are you talking about? Are you still talking about the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations? Yes, because after the action comes the reaction. I told you they're celebrating the champions in Algeria as the Terenga Lions. They got back home. Some person said, ah, you were close. Why didn't you win it? Others said, don't worry. You guys can still do it again. Football in Africa are getting loads of attention. Not just the football on the pitch. The politics of football is also getting interesting. So we're trying to see where all of these we swing to for the development of the sport. Because in the end, football should actually be the winner. Sports Tonight on Channels Television, let's welcome Femi Fabumi. Femi, it's good to have you on Sports Tonight. Good evening, Austin. Yeah. <laughs> I've not seen you since uh, Algeria won. Uh, did you predict Algeria to win the AFCON? Yes. Um, they, they were the best team at the tourney, and I wasn't surprised when they won it. Mm. I, however, um, the Terenga Lions of Senegal gave a very good fight in that final. But for them, the wait continues. Mm. For me, Algeria deserves to win, and they've won. So that's it. Uh, uh, and the contest is now back to uh, Mares, uh, Mares and uh, Mani, <laughs> who wins the uh, <laughs> best player of the year. Mm. <laughs> oh, Nigeria just whispered now that I should give it to Ndidi. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so that's it. After football, we get uh, attention. We'll continue to talk about it. But let's bring the discussion back home now. Tomorrow in Lagos, the fifth edition of the International Badminton Classics will serve off. Nigerian players will go against top badminton players from different parts of the world. This is one competition that we should say well done to uh, Lagos State for doing a good job giving our badminton players an opportunity to gain experience, gain exposure, play with top badminton players, get ranking points. There's also prize money. But look, just featuring at this is awesome. This was at the African Championship that took place in Port Harcourt. Nigerian badminton players, they came out big time, represented the country, won the team events, dominated the singles category. So the, for the Federation, they'll be hoping, Femi, that they sustain that momentum. Yeah, for me, I think it's a very good one, and we're beginning to see uh, players do well in badminton, unlike before, when our focus was just on football. Yeah. This is badminton. Look at what these players did at the last tournament. And again, another one is starting tomorrow. We wait to see what they will bring to the table. But the good thing is, Nigeria is now a badminton and playing nation, and that is good for the country. It's good. So that's it. Okpe, uh, I know Okpe Yori right there on your screen with a trophy. Uh, he's on fire. He's been playing fantastic badminton lately. I think he should be the top seed player for Nigeria. There's also Godwin Olofua. Uh, Enejo Abba also comes with some experience when you talk about uh, badminton in Nigeria for the men. For the women, it's Dockers or Dockers. Uh, Adeshoko. Dockers is on fire. Uh, this week she is top in Africa. The following week, uh, Kate, uh, we push her off. But at this championship, I'm sure Dockers will be waiting uh, to see if she can get her dominance Austin, back. I think um, what this goes mm. to show is mm. the fact that we have talent abound in the country. That's you know, uh, um, um, yeah. Before now, we only have people you know, focusing on football. But now, yeah. you, can, you can play badminton, you yeah. can play uh, volleyball, even basketball. Yeah. Then this is good for, for, for talent discovery in Nigeria. And let's see how we can make most of this at the next All African Games and subsequently the Olympics. I agree. And it should, right now, we're getting some good players. Uh, what the badminton federation also needs to do uh, get to the grassroots, grassroots yes. so that we see ways if Trans possible schools, and uh, we need to find out also if there's a way we bring the age grade into this one also maybe the under 16s to like the under 20s, 20s yeah yes, yes. you know to get to play so that we get to see new talents but we love the fact that we're talking about badminton <laughs> and uh, the international badminton <laughs> classics is a good one. I, I love the fact that it has been consistent. This is the fifth edition. Ah, that is fantastic. I'm glad this is the ad, not just um, um, sports analysts, but even um, sports fans. We have, the fifth edition is kickstarting tomorrow, and that is good. We hope to maintain this momentum. We hope that you know, we discover good badminton players that can go on to represent us at the Olympics, first of all, then later on. The, uh, uh, um, um, at the All-African Games, first of all, the yeah. Lebanon at the Olympics. Very possible. Very possible. That's, for sure. That's the long-term uh, plan for the Federation, the development of badminton in Nigeria. Nigeria is also doing so well in the doubles and the mixed doubles, and we showed it uh, right there at the African Championship in Port Harcourt. Let's see. Tomorrow, it will serve up 
right here in Lagos. We will be bringing you all the updates coming from the Badminton International Classics. Uh, it's the fifth edition, and um, it will be a good way to look at the development of the sport, not just in Nigeria, but in Africa. Let's get on with the show now. Talk about what's going on right there at the 2019 FIBA AfroCan. Someone is asking me again, what is AfroCan? Uh, it is a competition set aside for basketball players that apply their trade in their domestic league. We have that sort of event for, for the, football, uh, yeah, Chan. Mm -hmm, which is the Chan. So the media, the, the Chan, Chan now trend. Everybody looks forward to Chan, Chan, Chan. <laughs> uh, like for bad basketball, um, it's, the competition is going on in Bamako, Mali. It's the maiden edition. And um, Femi, I'll soon run through the results. Nigeria lost the first three matches, the matches they played. Uh, look at it right there. But it got so close today against Algeria. They lost by four points. And um, I was saying to someone yesterday that if we say the Chan is a reflection of a country's league football, we can also say the same for basketball. <laughs> yeah, um, first of all, Austin, I think um, this initiative is a very good one because when we have competitions um, in Africa and even at the World um, Championship, all we see is funding base representing um, the country. So this competition, we make the local uh, base players, you know, have a sense of belonging. So it's laudable. I hope it continues because it's a good one. As for uh, um, the, the Nigerian team, like we always say, there is joy in participation. They've gone there, they've seen how it has been run, they've been uh, exposed. And let's see, you know, what uh, 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 position they will finish at the end of the day. And let's see how we can work on our mistakes so that in subsequent competitions we will do well. Mm. So that's it, Nigeria. Uh, they lost their first match to Kenya, 81-69. to 69. Lost the second one to Congo, DR, 81-55 to 55 points. And today they lost to Algeria, 84-80. to 80. Just four points are different. So it tells you they're beginning to get into the competition, but hey, it is what it is. Also, how did they travel? How did they prepare? Yeah, I know they traveled by road. There you go. There oh, you my go. Goodness. Yeah, there you go. So <laughs> discrimination so, yeah. because the foreign last brother have traveled by road. Mm. So well, I mean, it is what you saw. You reap from someone at this point. Is this significant? How they went there? You knew we we're going to go for this competition. competition. Uh, you should prepare properly for it. But the good thing about losing is that there are always lessons. To take in it home. for you. So yeah. when they come back home now, it's not just the players and the coaching crew, the federation, they will look at it and say, hmm, the league, the league, we need to do more for the league. We need to fix it. Infrastructure, very, very important. Most of the basketball in Lagos is played at the indoor sports hall of the National Stadium in Suruleri. The indoor sports hall look, looks fairly okay. Fairly. It's okay. But the environment, the stadium itself. Austin, Austin the yeah. truth is, some African countries have gotten it right when it comes to league competition in basketball. Mm. Uh, um, the likes of Angola, even Egypt, yeah. Mali, Tunisia, uh, Senegal. The, yeah. so, so I see no reason why we cannot um, take a cue from these countries and probably you know, get a functioning league. Yeah, it is what it is. That's with basketball. In Nigeria, let's just hope that they will come back and then get into the business of developing the sports at the league level. Let's get into the uh, conversation now for table tennis. We'll be taking a look at the development of table tennis in Nigeria. The Junior National League, the fourth edition, just ended uh, this weekend in Lagos. 96 young table tennis players came out to compete, showed that they can play table tennis, gave us an assurance that the future looks good, that we can replace Aaron Okwadri, Olufunke, Oshanaike, Shegun Toriola, also can also serve as role model for these upcoming table tennis players. That's what he showed, but I want to celebrate the para table tennis players. Yes, the para team. Those guys that you see on wheelchair, yet they play fantastic table tennis. Ahmed Kolehosho, for instance, um, has been dominating the class three in Africa for a long time. It's currently Africa's number one. And he's saying, look, we're doing just fine for the country. We love the fact that we have this talent to play table tennis despite our condition. When the Super Eagles were playing the AFCON in Alexandria, they went there for the Para Table Tennis Championship, which also served as qualifiers for the Tokyo 2020 Paralympics. And at that competition, five of them, five para table tennis players qualified 
automatically. Beautiful story. Feel the power of sports. Nothing is stopping them. They just want to keep doing it. They love what they are doing. They want to stay competitive, responsible to their country, represent them properly when they go to competition. Ahmed Kuleo show, I caught up with him. He said, look, Austin, we love that we have this talent. We love that we're not, we're not by this roadside begging. But can the people, can the government, can the federation, can the sports ministry do more for us? That's all what we want. Let's listen to Ahmed Kuleo show. And when we come back, I'll talk about para table tennis in Nigeria. Sponsorship mostly sponsorship then enlightenment um we just need encouragement monetary encouragement because most of our counterparts are not special athletes the table tennis athletes they get to go to a lot of competitions compared to us uh compared to our uh, counterparts in other countries para athletes they go to about five six seven eight nine ten competitions a year sometimes we don't even go to any competition a year so that affects our performances uh, most times they change the equipment we use a lot of the time. The tables, the speed uh, is always varying all the time. The speed increases, the racket we use and all that, but since we don't get sponsorship, most of the things we do is um, based on our own efforts. So we need a lot of monetary sponsorship. They should create some form of league for us, some, something that will always keep us busy and active. But definitely we are all going there to try our best to win at least a very good medal, bronze, silver, gold. Either of those three is, any of those three is, uh, is perfect for us. But for us to even get to the bronze medal table, we need to to be camped in time. We need to get into camp in time. Hopefully, we need to go for training tour to go to other countries like maybe Korea, China, Japan. Those that are very good at games, learn from them, get acquainted with their games and all that before we can prepare. Before we can go to um, Tokyo. But Tokyo is just August, so less than a year from now. So we need those things to be in place for us to to perform. So Ahmed Kolesha has just reminded us again that you think the Olympics is far away. He said no, it's it's less than a year. And did you listen to him again? Look, I love it when I meet this this special athletes, this para athlete they they take me to a place I want to be. They empower me. They inspire me. He said that they love what they are doing, but can we just support them? That's why he's just saying that. And every time you meet these persons, they are asking for support. Why can't we see that we need to support these athletes? Yeah, I'm, I met Kali Ushu and his colleagues, not just in table tennis, yeah. but other sports. Power have sports. shown that there's yeah. ability and disability. That's right. They've won laurels upon laurels mm. for the country, home and abroad. And see, we are appealing to the government to you know, look into uh, their case. They, they need monetary uh, 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 sponsorship and that should be given to them we've seen what they've done in the past we know what they're capable of doing and this they've done many good things for nigeria mm -hmm. you know in competitions on african games olympics each time we go for the olympics we see the paralympians must, you know coming on with medals, with medals yeah. Uh, yeah, and yeah. So for me, I'm appealing to the government. I want the incoming sports minister, we don't know him yet, mm. to key into uh, uh, this particular sector and make sure that the, uh, there is good welfare for the, these athletes and, and these players. And that's what Ahmed Kolesha was saying, that good welfare. So for instance, we have qualified for the, for the, para, uh, for the Paralympics in Tokyo. What are the programs? Says his mates. In a year, they go for more than 10 competitions. Sometimes they don't go for any. Yet, they go out, represent the country, and win. Awesome, beautiful. So, we'll continue to uh, encourage, support para sports in Nigeria. I don't even want to talk about the para power lifters. When they go out of this country, you know they are bringing back gold medals. So, it's important I'll put it out there that five para table tennis players have already qualified for the Paralympics as we prepare for the Olympics. Let's remember that the para-athletes will also go for the Paralympics. Very, very important. That, that should be the first assignment for the incoming sports minister, that you have to give attention to para-sports development in Nigeria. Let's talk about football now. The Nigeria National League, uh, Jigawa Golden Stars, Adamawa United, Aqua Starlets, and Warrior Wolves, they have qualified for 
next season's MPFL. It was a good show of football at the different centers, but hey, it is what it is. Six teams, but only four could pick tickets to the top flight. Let's go on this break. When we come back, we'll talk about the teams that qualified, let you see highlights of some of the, the action, and then we'll get on with the show. So don't go anywhere. Stay with us.